In this next video, I'm gonna be talking about whether or not med school rank matters. And I think this really applies for either one, pre-meds who are applying into med school and trying to choose med schools to attend, and also for fourth year medical students who are curious while they're applying for residencies and they're meeting a lot of people from other institutions. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So the first thing that I want to start off with is I think there's definitely two sides to every argument, and I think there's benefits from going to both types of programs. For me personally, I went to a college at a fairly unknown local state school, but I did go to a med school at a top five program. So I think I've been able to see two sides to the story when I was applying to med school and also when I was applying to residency. So the first thing is I think there's a lot of myths about attending a well-known medical school. Um, one being you'll earn a lot more respect from your interviewers uh, when you're applying for these residencies. Immediately if they see the school that you're coming from, they're going to respect you a lot more. Also, they care a lot about the residencies. The residencies care a lot more about the schools that these residents have attended so they can kind of list them on their residency lists on their websites. And it's a lot easier for you to come from a better program and get into these top residency programs. And I think that for the most part, all of these are missed. There are things that I don't necessarily think give you any benefit. I think that a lot of applicants may feel that way, but never I've never found that to be true when I've been talking to interviewers. They never have felt that way. It's just another med school that you're going to just like every Everybody else. But I think there are some benefits to going to a prestigious med school. And I think these are ones that are listed is that one, oftentimes the med school that you go to, if it's a very strong medical school, it's typically associated with a fairly strong residency. And that's really where you're getting the benefit. It's not the med school itself that you're getting any benefit from. It's actually the residency program that is attached to that. Because the residency program that you train at, if it's a good residency program, oftentimes you'll place very great alumni. You'll create very great alumni that will become program directors at other institutions, that will become assistant PDs, that will become people that will interview you, or become even deans or chairs of different departments. And so you have created this network of people that you know without ever actually meeting any of them. And it's that benefit that I can say that is really beneficial for you. It's not the med school itself, it's actually the residency. It's the residency that did all the work and and that's what the benefit that you're getting from. So you're able to build a lot of these connections very quickly. So these people that you're interviewing with oftentimes know your mentors, know your preceptors, know your PIs, the people that wrote your letters of rec. So it's a one, it's a good opportunity to just have that commonality and be able to talk about something together. But more importantly, it, it adds a lot of trust. It adds a lot of trust to your letter of rec. When they're reading your letter of rec, all the adjectives that they're giving you mean a lot more because they know that person that's writing it. Either they have met them before and they know them personally, or they've heard of them um, at conferences or things like that. So there's a lot of networking that you, you have benefited from without actually doing any work. Um, in addition to that, I think that these individuals, because they know a lot of different people, they're able to make those important important phone calls or make those important emails because they know a lot of people at other institutions. So the place that you want to train at, then your PI, your advisor or your preceptor may know someone at that other institution and there's a lot higher probability you may benefit from this network. I think the opposite side can be easily argued as well, is that that same network can easily be achieved at any other institution. I think that you have a little bit higher probability that the people that you will work with at these very prestigious med schools have a very wide network. But you know there's always going to be somebody at every single med school. If you're a med student yourself, you will know this, that there's always going to be somebody in every single field that is known for being that researcher, who is known for being very well known in the community. There's always going to be somebody. It may not be dozens of people at your institution, but there's always going to be somebody. So I think that it's highly dependent on the individual, not necessarily on the program. You just have to reach out and make those opportunities for yourself because there's always going to be somebody who will give you the benefit that you get at any other institution. It's really up to you. I think that the opportunity to shine may be a little bit greater. I felt like in college that that opportunity to shine in my college was a lot easier than in med school. And I think that that can be said about any college. I think that med school is just at another level that you're going to have more gunnerish, more competitive, just more people that are very smart and very competitive at any institution that you train at. The one thing that I'll say is that I think that I can say that 
these more prestigious programs, oftentimes they tend to breed people who go into a lot of these very competitive subspecialties. And that's just more about exposure, I would say. And the one thing that I would say about that is that at my institution, for example, it's very common for you to have five people going to neurosurgery, another 10 going to derm, another 10 going to ENT, and 10 going into radiology, and a handful going to opto, and some of these other very competitive specialties. And so I think that it doesn't matter in the sense that you have these numbers. It's, it's actually, if anything, I think it's a negative for you if you want to go into these specialties because, well, now you're competing internally with nine other people that you didn't necessarily have to compete with if you went to a a program where they only had a couple people who went into the specialty of your choice. I think that the example that I can give is that there's one particular uh, case where there's a number of my classmates who are all working in the same PI. There's this one individual who's very prolific in, in their specialty. It's a very competitive specialty, and you have three or four people all applying into that same specialty, all working under that same PI. Well, now when it comes to your letter of rec writing, that PI is going to have difficulties because they're going to have to rank them internally. To make a credible letter of rec at the end of it, you also have to say how good of an individual this is by giving some type of actual uh, quantitative result. Is this person in the top 5, the top 5%, the top 10%, things like that. And in order to maintain their credibility, they're also going to have to rank internally with these applicants who are all applying in the same year. You're now competing with all these other people internally. So I think that that can be very difficult. The other thing that I found that was particularly hard for me was that when I would apply to other residency programs that were either community or, or much smaller in the academic setting, I would oftentimes get discriminated where they would say that the, why would you ever want to come to this school when you can go to your institution or you can go to an institution like that or I guess in the same size. And they assume that your interests are in research and in academics just because that's what the, the med school that you trained at or the residency that is associated with that med school that you trained at is known for. And I I think that that becomes disadvantageous for you if one, one if you haven't gotten interviews at those very prestigious places, um, and also two, if you don't have those interests. So I think that, that those can be very difficult for you in regards to that. I think really what it boils down to in choosing a med school as well as in choosing a residency is you have to go with your gut. You have to go with your gut because at the end of the day, all of these rankings are very arbitrary. I mean, who makes them? They're, they're just random, random selections. I know U.S. News has a certain med school ranking. I think it's dependent on funding for research, but we're not researchers. We're, we're going to med school. We're, we're trying to be clinical physicians for the most part. So all this funding for NIH funding, it doesn't really affect us all that much. Most of the research projects that we're working on are going to be for free. So why does that matter? Also, all these residency rankings, they, they're just very arbitrary because they're actually done by surveys. Doximity makes all of their residency rankings just by, based off of a survey. So how is that very effective? So you have to go with your gut. Location and happiness are so much more important than this arbitrary ranking that you'll, you'll make. For me, I chose the med school that I went to, not based on any ranking. I made it because it actually was the, the med school that I wanted to go to in regards to location. It was the closest med school in my area that I had gotten into, and I wanted to stay in that area because that's where I wanted to train in the future. So for me, I think that location and happiness are so much more important than this arbitrary ranking that people make. And I think it's really about opportunity. You have to make the most out of every situation that you're given, no matter if you go to the best med school in the world or the last med school ranking in the world. I think that you have to make the most out of every situation because you can make anything into a good opportunity and you can make anything great into a so-so opportunity. So I think that that's really what it boils down to in, in regards to choosing a med school. I think for me personally, if I were to break it down, I think that the ranking of the med school in itself doesn't really make that much of a difference. But I think that the opportunity is definitely very prevalent to be able to take advantage of um, if you go to these prestigious med schools, but it's only if you take advantage of them. So I think that it can be said for, for both scenarios. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our progress notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.